the x, x squared plus 2x minus 3, and now I can factor that to what? Right. Mm -hmm. So if f of x, if f prime of x equals 0, then I have 0 equals e to the x, x plus 3, x minus 1. So where is e to the x equal to 0? e to the x. N 0, right, never equals 0. And then from here, I get that x equals negative 3 and 1. So those are my critical points. Right. Now, now, I have to do the end points, all right? But because I need to find local extrema, and there are like several here, so take a look at what I, what I can also do. Because the end points are negative 5 and 5, I put those here. Now I have negative 3, 1, right? So here is what the first derivative test says. Now, if I take numbers to put, plug in here, 0, for example, right? I'm going to plug it into here. This is always going to be positive, so I ignore it. Positive, negative, so that's going to be negative. And then the others are going to alternate. So this is f prime here, e to the x. I'm sorry, uh, f prime of x. So now take a look. So that's f prime. So f is increasing, decreasing, increasing. Now, I absolutely know that there is a max here and a min here, just like we did up there. But. Because now I have closed end points, I also know that I have a minimum at the negative 5, right? And I have a maximum at the 5. You see that? So minimum here because it's coming up from there, and then there is a maximum there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because when you listen when you just do f of negative 5 f of 5 blah 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 you find the absolute min and the absolute max but you can't find the local min or max in that case like you, you can't find the relative one so here's what we're going to do now watch where are my minima f of negative 5 is a minimum and also f of 1 Okay, so where am I going to plug these into? The original. So for f of 5, I get, f of negative 5, I get 22 e to the negative 5. And I can't leave it like that. That's 22 over e to the 5. And then here I get negative 2e. No, you don't have to. Maximum. I have one at negative 3 and one at 5. Six, so at negative 3, I get 6 over e cubed, and then 22 e to the 5. So do you see what I mean? Had we done it without this, we would have done all these, and then we would have said, oh, this is the largest number, so absolute max at f of 5, right? And then absolute min f of 1, but that wouldn't have given us the other two points. Okay, so the first derivative test, though, will. Okay. Now for a new concept. Concavity. I know. So, concavity um, is how the graph is curved, basically. All right? So um, if you have a, <clears throat> if you have something that looks like this, 
this is concave up. All right, we say this is concave up. And then if you have something that looks like this, we say it's concave down. So basically, like if it's a container, like with, you know, opening upwards, it's concave up, sort of. So um, the, re the way we can decide or determine concavity is this. We say a graph is concave up if y prime is increasing. So not y anymore, but y prime. And we say it's concave down if y prime is decreasing. Okay. Let's talk about some examples of con. Uh, let's let's draw some examples of concave up. Okay. What are some ways that a graph could be concave up? Right. So here is a graph that is concave up. Here is a graph that is also concave up, but it's just going down. So in the first case, this is concave up, but decreasing. This is concave up, but it's increasing. So you can have it both ways. So what are some ways that you can have a graph that's concave down? Oh, yeah, good. That's concave down, and then that's concave down. So here is an example of a graph that's concave down but increasing, and then concave down but decreasing. Okay? Yes. Almost. <laughs> okay, so here's the concavity test. A graph has to be twice differentiable. What does that mean? You can take a derivative and then you can take a derivative again. So the graph of a twice differentiable function, it's concave up if y double prime is positive. So remember how we were doing this for f prime? We take another derivative and we do this for f double prime. And then it's concave down whenever y double prime is negative. Okay, I love this stuff, so let's just do one. Let's just, let's just get right into it, okay? Okay. So we're going to use the concavity test to determine the intervals on which the graph of the function is concave up and concave down. Okay? Concavity, second derivative. So y prime, negative 4x cubed plus 12x squared minus 4 y double prime, negative 12x squared. Awesome. Now, we're going to set y prime equal to 0. So we're going to say 0 equals negative 12x times x minus 2. From here, we get x equals 0 and x equals 2. Don't call these critical points. Critical points are where what equals 0? The first derivative. This is the second derivative. Later, they might get qualified to be called something, but not yet. We don't know yet if they're going to qualify to get a special name. Okay? Now, the rest is sort of similar for now. I put in a 0. I put in a 2. When I put in a negative number, I get negative. 1 gives me a positive, that gives me a negative. So where am I plugging these in? Into y double prime. So now, y double prime is negative, this is concave down. And the way I draw the symbol for it is concave down, concave up, concave down. Isn't that cool? Yeah, so now, it's concave up from 0 to 2. It's concave down from negative infinity to 0, 2 to infinity. No brackets for these. Now, what? Okay, 
What do we call those points then? They gotta be called something. Well, <laughs> if we were going to call them something, Jillian suggests points of inflection. Okay, why not? Let's go with that. Yeah. Point of inflection. But now here is the thing. Not everybody qualifies to be a point of inflection. Two conditions must be met in order for something to be a point of inflection one is um it has to be you know where y double prime is zero okay fine that's an easy condition to meet but it's a point of inflection is a point where the graph of a function has a tangent line and more importantly where the concavity changes from up and down and so on and so forth. So here, we got 0 and 2. We put them on the number line. At 0, did the function change concavity? Yeah. Yes, so it can be a point of inflection. At 2, did it change concavity? Yes, so it's a point of inflection. All right, so let's change, let's find points of inflection here y prime is 12x squared minus 4x cubed so y double prime is 24x minus 12x squared so 0 equals 20 uh, let's factor 12x 2 minus x so x is 0 x is 2 Number line, when x is a negative number, this is negative, positive, negative. Okay, so we plug this into y double prime. So, concave down, up, down. So both of those are points of inflection, so I say POI x equals 0, x equals 2. Can I figure out the y values? How? Plug it into the original. So it's at 0, 0, and 2, comma, 16. Okay, so we get those by plugging it into y. You need the y values for something? Yeah. All right, let's do this one. Product rule, u is e to the x. I feel like I'm always making a grammar mistake when I say u is. v is x squared. I hate that. That's like my only thing about, okay. I gotta get over it somehow. Okay. So f y prime e to the x x squared plus e to the x times 2x. So I'm going to factor out an e to the x. And I'm going to get, no, not an x, because I'm going to get x squared plus 2x now. Because I need to find y double prime. You can find y double prime here, but it's a it's a mess because you gotta do product rule here, product rule there. That's just crazy. You can factor out u the x and you could do product rule one time. So to find y double prime, again, u is gonna equal e to the x, v x squared plus two x. So u prime e to the x, v prime, 2x plus 2. So y double prime is e to the x, x squared plus 2x, plus e to the x, 2x plus 2. Okay, I can factor out an e to the x from this entire thing. 
So I get x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 2. <clears throat> okay, so y double prime is equal to e to the x, x squared plus 4x plus 2. So 0, okay, so we set this equal to 0. E to the x can't equal 0, right? You know what, I'm going to go all the way up there because this takes like so much. Okay. So what about that guy? No. Yeah, you got to do quadratic formula. Do you though? Do you? What if you don't? B squared minus 4AC all over A. Mikey, just for saying that, tomorrow I'm going to make you derive it on the board, the quadratic formula. <laughs> okay, so, so we have two points here. It's negative 2 minus root 2, negative 2 plus root 2. We know that one is smaller than the other, right? Okay, do we also know that this is a negative number? Yeah. How about negative 2 plus root 2? Is that a negative number or a positive number? That's still a negative number. So um, 0 is here. So I can take 0 and plug it into here, and I get a positive number, and then they're going to alternate. See? It's not even like, huh? Most of the time, unless you have like something squared, yeah. So now, now check it out though. So these are both going to qualify as points of inflection. Now, how do I write it in coordinate form? Uh -huh. Well, negative 2 minus root 2, comma. And then it's going to be e to the x times x squared, right? So e to the negative 2 minus root 2 times x squared. That's one coordinate point. No, because this is the point, like this is, yeah, 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 I did. And then the other one is negative 2 plus root 2, e to the negative 2 plus root 2, negative 2 plus root 2 squared. Hmm? No. 